Hello and welcome to the 7pm. Whether you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, it's great to have you with us this evening. You are indeed very, very welcome. And uh, once again, we had a fantastic time last week mm -hmm. discussing the subject of living out of a place of rest and what that means, what the consequence of that means for us and for those around us. And it was really interesting. It was, it was. And now, do you feel after that, this last week, are you feeling rested? Feeling living out of a place of rest? No, no. <laughs> no, it's, it's aspirational, isn't it? But we did have a birthday in our house this week and with COVID restrictions. Yeah, you've got to do a lot of things when you can only have six together. Yeah, that's right. But uh, it, it, we're looking forward to putting the things into practice. And it, uh, it, was, it was a fascinating conversation. Yeah. And we'll, we'll try again this week. But anyway, this evening's subject is... Mm. Am I my brother's keeper? A phrase we've often heard, but like at the moment where we're so aware in society how we're looking out for the needs of others. But as we do that, sometimes that means that can restrict some of our own freedoms. And what does the Bible say about that, actually, about how we look out for others and our own freedom in that? Yeah. It's going to be interesting. So stay tuned, join in with us and come and join us on the second half over on Zoom later on. And a on. bit of a spoiler for that, actually. What we're going to be discussing on Zoom later on is that whole idea of freedom. Do we really feel free? And what is it to be free? Um, and what is it to, to live with others in mind? So, yeah, we're going to talk about that later. Before we get to that, we're going to have a time of worship together where we're going to try and focus on the Lord and, and sing if you feel like it or just rest in his presence uh, if you don't feel like singing at the TV screen. Uh, we're also going to have... Favourite feature, Lockdown, Lockdown Life. Life. And Sam has been interviewed this week. Sam is part of our 7pm community. In fact, one thing we didn't say that we also have done in the last week is we meet up um, midweek in smaller groups, no more than six, just to get together. And we did that last week. And this week we've got a, a prayer walk coming up. So if you're interested in that as well, find out some more details from us on Zoom later on for what we're doing this coming week. Good reminder. So as we get going this evening, why don't we just open with prayer? And then we'll hand over to Steve. Father God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you that we can spend time focusing on you, learning from you, being with you. And we ask, would you come Holy Spirit? Would you not just uh, join us as we watch, but would you transform us as we listen to you and spend time with you? So we pray that you're with us now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Steve, over to you. Hi everyone, thanks very much Gemma and Jay. Here we are, well we're not so much on location tonight, we're in our garden uh, enjoying the beautiful uh, cool of the evening. And I'm here with Sam. Great to have you with me, Sam. Thank you. We're going to be looking, uh, I know Gemma's looking later at Galatians 5, and we're going to be thinking about uh, serving one another humbly in love and loving our neighbour as ourself. So, Sam, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so, I'm 30 years old. I'm a uh, husband to Jess, and I, my job is building machinery calibrate temperature probes so very exciting um, very practical and uh, yeah that's about me okay um, how have how have you been loved by your church family or families over the years and tell us a little bit about what what that looked like to be loved by your church family or Christian friends so biggest example of being loved for me is when I first became a Christian, I was told, I, I went to a church that my mum attended, and I was just, when I first began to attend, I was just told by so many people that she had known for years, and that she had been asking for prayer for me in home group. And they all just swooped on me, and just told me how delighted they were to see me, and that they'd been praying for me for years, and they were just, just excited to have me involved and just to be around. So you've really experienced that love from other Christians and um, maybe tell me about one or two Christians you, you've met who 
and it's a great thing when we when we do meet these Christians who really seem to fulfill Jesus command to love one another tell me uh, a little bit about perhaps somebody you've met what do they look like what do they do when so, they fulfill that command so two people that are outstanding to me um, my boss at work who found me in church and gave me a home for years um, and gave me a job like a career now doing something I really love like I love tinkering and making things I get to do that all day and the second person that comes straight to mind is uh, a friend at my old church and um, she is just loving warm and she just opens her house to everyone so many like church events at her house and she's just been praying for me and my family for years that hospitality thing is huge isn't it when you yes. meet people who open the doors of their home that's been a big thing for, for me too so i can really relate to that T tell us how have how have you changed over the years in how you view um other christians or just christians in general because i know you became a christian some eight years ago something like that yes. but how, how's your view changed of other believers over the years how do you see them it's a it's a tricky one it's, it fluctuates so when I, before as Christian, I thought they were tryhards, <laughs> um, and I couldn't believe that they meant what they said, because it uh. seemed too good to be true, and I thought no one's that good. Um, then when I became a Christian, I was think I saw everyone and like met these fantastic people, and I saw they actually do live it. They they do mean us, and they they're just full of love. And like I am slowly learning that my initial impression wasn't spot on. Because right. I'm learning about how much being a Christian is a journey. Yeah. And so you can meet Christians in church and think they're all going to be like this, but everyone's coming up at their own pace. Absolutely. Yeah. And you see, you see the faults, but you also see sure. the blessing that people are. And you see the change in people over the years. You see the growth. Yes. Yeah. And. Sometimes it's lovely, you know, in humility. Sometimes you see it in yourself as well, Definitely. don't you? Yes. I used to be like this, but actually God's made me a little bit nicer than I used to be. I, I'm, I'm talking for you, I'm talking for me. <laughs> you know, but if that's true for you, it's true for you. And you creep into those old habits as well. You do. You need to get that sure. nudge from, yeah. from Jesus. Absolutely. One final question, Sam, uh, and thank you for sharing some of your stories. One final question, loving one another, prayer or practical? I would say practical to begin with yeah. because you need to be warm, you need to be loving, you need to lead people with you on the journey of being a Christian. You need to just grab them and just <laughs> just show them what a delight the Lord is and how they can people can have that love that they need because everyone's everyone's struggling, everyone's just yeah. beats them down and they need to know they're loved. Wow. That's brilliant. Thank you for sharing so much with us, Sam. Uh, and we'll see you next time for the next episode of Lockdown Life. God bless. Cheers. Bye.
Thank you guys for that. Uh, it's mm. it's still sometimes a bit strange, isn't it, singing mm. to the TV? But I, I love having that time to sit and reflect in the presence yeah. of the Lord. It's it's great. So thank you for that. Now Gemma's going to speak to us and bring us some thoughts on um, freedom. Yeah. And am I my brother's keeper? So let's just pray for Gemma. Let's pray for us as we do that. Father God, would you be with us now and would you take the words and thoughts and reflections mm. of Gemma, breathe your life into them and uh, Lord, would you speak to us, to our hearts, to our minds mm. and would we be transformed by your spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Over to you. Now, am I my brother's keeper? Well, the UK government seems to think that I am. That's why I'm wearing this face mask. 
to protect others from COVID-19. Now I'm going to take it off as I'm back in the house and so you can hear me. When we wash our hands for 20 seconds and sing happy birthday, when we sanitise our hands when we walk into a shop, when we keep two metres apart from each other, what we're actually doing is protecting one another. Now I think this year we've probably realised more than other years in recent history just how connected we are to the world around us. Whether we have tried to get hold of computer parts or car parts but we've not been able to because of the global pandemic. Or whether it's just that there has been someone in our road, maybe one of our neighbours, who has had to self-isolate um, and therefore we've been able to be the person that's got their shopping or their cooking. Or we've even just become aware just how much we rely on other key workers in our society and our community. We're aware, if you like, that we indeed are our brother's keeper. But how do we feel about that, honestly? Because to put it one way, of course we want to look out for others and we want to support one another. But as soon as we do that, aren't we losing some of our own freedom? Freedom, if you like, in our culture is the right to do whatever I want, whenever I want to do it, with whoever I want to do it with. Or as the song goes, free to be whatever I, whatever I want to be. And freedom is seen as our basic human right. And it's seen as our basic human right from when we're really small. My three-year-old toddler is quite keen to exercise his own freedom. And sometimes he'll be quite expressive in the way that he wants to do that. I want TV, I don't want to go to bed, and I want this now. We're kind of desperate, if you like, or feel that it's our right to have our own freedom. We want to choose what our life is about. We want to see the whole world that is out there and explore it, and nothing and no one is gonna get in our way. So if our society tells us that actually we're to be our brother's keeper, then does that not diminish the freedom that we have to do whatever we want? Well, what does the Bible teach us about freedom? Does it look at this clash between looking out for ourselves and looking out for others? Well, in Galatians 5 verse 13, it kind of tackles that issue and it says this, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. What rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love one another, or love your neighbour as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Now this section in Galatians is actually called Life by the Spirit, and that's what Paul is trying to teach the Galatians about, how to live by the Spirit. When he was writing to this church in Galatia, what was going on is he had been concerned that they turned away from that gospel message that they were originally given. And instead, they had focused on trying to redo the Jewish customs that they were doing before, or keep some of the Jewish law. But instead of doing that, Paul is saying, no, no, no. And you look back in chapter four and he says, instead, you've been clothed with Christ. So to clothe yourself with Christ. Don't return to the Jewish laws and customs because they're never going to lead you to new life and the new freedom that Jesus has. In fact, they're just going to tie you in knots. Now, Paul wanted this new church to understand that we are free because we walk by the Spirit in this new way in Christ. Free from religion, free from regulations, but instead free to directly approach God and free to live a life that is full of the things that are not going to drag us down. When we become uh, a Christian, if you like, we clothe ourselves in Christ. We move ourselves from being at the centre of our life and instead of our life being all about us, our life is about Jesus. And we place him at the centre instead and that means our goal shift and our perspective changes. We no longer have to be the most successful person or the most wealthiest person or to have the best house or to be defined by what we look like or to be defined by what we wear. We don't need to be bound up in jealousy or anger or that comparison trap where we compare ourselves to one another or to be um, eaten by greed or to be in unhealthy relationships or to be in that relentless rushing or exhaustion that we can find ourselves in this rat race of life. 
No, we don't have to do that because Jesus has shown us another way. He's shown us his way, a way of freedom, where his yoke is easy and where his burden is light. If we make Jesus the centre of our lives and we live by the Spirit, the Spirit renews us, the Spirit leads us. And as we do that, we encounter greater joy. And out of that greater joy and freedom, it makes us want to love our neighbours. It makes us want to share the freedom that we have been given with others. It makes us want to see others thrive and we see the, the joy in that. We see that by laying our lives down, that is when we actually find it. We have renewed purpose. We have greater joy and a bigger peace that could be gained than working through all hours to strive to get something that is probably always unattainable. Not only that, but as we allow Jesus to lead us by his spirit, it means that we get to deal with the things that get in the way, the mess of life. Those things that can make us angry or bitter. But instead, through the Spirit, we're renewed and he equips us to live a life where we're more transformed into the likeness of Christ. Where we don't do those things anymore, the things that the Bible talks about as sin. But actually, we get to live in the freedom that Jesus has given us. And as we do that, it will become more and more natural for us to think of what we can do for others rather than what is it that I want? Now this process is something that theologians call sanctification. It's becoming more like Christ through the work of the Spirit within us. This sanctification, this life by the Spirit, this being clothed with Christ is exactly what Paul is talking about here in Galatians. We have freedom in Christ, not to be subject to the law in the way that the Jews were. You know, earlier in chapter five, it talks about circumcision and how we don't need to be subject to that anymore. And how we don't need to earn God's love or to earn our way to God. We don't believe in karma where we have to do so many things, um, yeah, for, for life to work out okay. But actually, it's not about what we've done, but it's about what Jesus has done and his life and his death and his resurrection, meaning that we can be free from the things that get in the way of our life, that get the sin, if you like, that means life isn't as it could be or as God designed it to be, but instead we get to live by his spirit. And this kind of freedom doesn't just free us, but it frees others. Let me give you an example of this. So say I go out to one of my favorite coffee shops and I have a coffee. And there you go, I'm, I'm exercising my freedom to be able to do that. But if to do that, it meant that somebody else was enslaved or treated poorly or badly or paid badly to get those coffee beans and to transport them and to prepare them. And the person who's bringing my coffee over to me in the coffee shop is being treated poorly as well or paid badly. Well, that's not the kind of freedom that God is talking about where I'm free, but my freedom is enslaving others. No, my freedom should mean that actually others are also free. So maybe they get paid a, a better living wage to be able to do that, to provide for their, their family as they're picking coffee in a different country. And the person that is working in, in the coffee shop is doing that in a way that is, um, they're in a part of a, a team that's encouraging them and inspiring them and treating them well as they do that job. This is what Paul is getting at. The freedom that we have, we should use to serve one another. Now, John Stott puts it quite a lot more bluntly than that. And he says, Christian freedom is freedom from sin, not freedom to sin. My freedom in Christ shouldn't oppress others, but rather my freedom in Christ should enable me to serve others. We love those around us, not because it's the law to love them, but because increasingly, as Jesus is the centre of our lives and as we are renewed by his Holy Spirit, we take on the likeness of Christ, we are clothed with Christ and therefore we naturally want to love others. As verse 14 says, the entire law is fulfilled by keeping the command to love one another. Freedom to live the life that God has created us to live. 
The freedom we have is a freedom that we can use to bring freedom to others, to love our neighbours. If you like, the freedom we have to enable us to be our brother or our sister's keeper. But also the freedom to know that they are also ours. So we can look out for those people in church or people in our community that are in need and out of our freedom do something to support or help them and maybe cook a meal for someone who is isolating or in need at the moment. Maybe take someone out for coffee or open our home so others can have community to share the things that God has given us with others. But also to have the humility to accept the help and support from others as well. Some of us may find it easy to be our brother's keeper, but how easy do we find it to be kept by another brother or sister? Well, that's a challenge for us, isn't it? Something that we're acutely aware of at this time. So let's just pray and ask God to equip us and to help us and to free us from the things that get in the way. Let's pray. Lord God, we just ask you to come by your Holy Spirit now. Wherever we are, in our homes, in our cars, outside, Lord, we ask that you will be present with us. We pray for that freedom that has set us free. Lord, we thank you that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And so we pray for those things that maybe get in the way that, so we don't feel free, the things that maybe we're addicted to, the things that are kind of ingrained behaviours, whether that's driving for success or workaholism or comparing ourselves to others or greed or any of the things that can entangle and take away the joy and the freedom in our lives. Lord, we ask that you will bring freedom in those. And we ask that by your Spirit, you will help to shape us into the likeness of your Son and remind us that we are clothed in Christ. Go before us, we pray. Amen. Come
Well, that brings the first half to a close. Uh, and we're really looking forward to, to hearing from you now and uh, as many of you who's, who can come and join us as we chew over the stuff that we've heard from Gemma um, and in lockdown life and just as well, just have a chance to catch up together and, and discuss what's been going on for the last week or so. So do come and join us. The details are in the comments section. Yeah. On all the various social media platforms Thank yeah you. facebook instagram and on youtube look at the comments and find our zoom details so get the kettle on load up zoom and we'll see you in a couple of minutes great see you then <laughs>